No, I mean, we I think we had a really good plan and we executed our plan very, very well, you know. Knowing the conditions, windy, it's cold, the field's not great, you know, we, we really worked hard defensively and I thought that's where the started it started with the defensive foundation that we had today. They couldn't penetrate us, played on the counter. I thought we did really well with it and we finished our chances and we could have honestly had, you know, more more goals that, you know, I missed one in the first half that I should have scored. So, you know, I credit to the team. We we worked hard today, we ran our butts off today and we got the result that we deserved. Cape Altitude Sports Radio. Johnny, it looked like you guys kind of grew into the game and your, your confidence grew as the game went on and your transitions, as you mentioned, they seemed to just get more and more uh, effective. Is that the way it felt to you guys on the pitch? And what was it that made you guys so effective in transition? No, I think one of the big things is we really keyed on that this week, you know, finishing our chances off the transition, you know, uh, learning how to attack or getting better at attacking out of it, you know, not just getting it wide and just crossing, like finishing our chances in transition. So I think, you know, once we got used to the field and how it was playing, I mean, we figured it out, we started connecting our passes, we started to play off each other really well. But like I said, the biggest thing for me is, you know, we had a really, really, really good defensive shape. You know, I think their 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 best players didn't couldn't really get on the ball unless it was just really in front of us. They didn't really penetrate us, you know, except for I think the one chance at the end of the first half, Martinez, you know. But other than that, I thought defensively we had a really good game and that set us up now to put us in good attacking spots. Matt Pollard, last word on soccer. Hey Jonathan, thanks for the time. Um, you know, obviously you with the goal, Diego Rubio with the goal and the assist, you know, the the teams had chances. The teams struggled to score goals so far this game. Um, is it joy? Is it relief? Um, did you know that this was happening? You know, what's the emotions in the locker room right now for you and the other attackers? I think you know, it, it's last year. It was the same thing. I think we started off the year. You know, I think we were playing good, but we were just missing that little extra in the final third. You know, taking our chances, being confident, and even still at the start of the game. You know, like I said for myself, I had like two or three chances that. You know, I could have either took a shot, the one that I missed in the front of the goal, you know, make, making a wrong decision, just having that confidence to just trust each other to get the ball in the right spots and just putting in all our chances. So I think for us, it's, it's a, I don't want to say it's relief because we all know we can score goals. I mean, we still were what, top five in the conference last year and scored uh, goals scored. So it's just having that breakthrough game. And for us, I think it's a big confidence boost and it's a testament to us that I think last year it didn't take us to what, Minnesota for us to put up more than two goals in a game. Now it's the second game of the season, we put up three. So I think that should give us as a team confidence to now, you know, we can hang with everyone when it comes to the attacking play. And obviously we know defensively we're a very solid team. Was it Brendan Fallen that was post? Hey, Jonathan. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, from last week to this week, um, the pressing tactics that LAFC used and Atlanta were similar under um, Gonzalo Pineda. Um, you know, tonight, what, what did you think you guys did well to limit their uh, counterattacks and um, have, have a strong start in that uh, defense end? Thanks. I think our counter, counter movement today was really, really good. And I thought we, you know, we played off the cusp a little bit, but I think like, again, we had a, we had a game plan that we have to turn them around. You know, teams aren't gonna come and press us if our attacking players are putting away chances, but more importantly, you know, Mark said it before the game, making their legs feel like they're tired. So just running them to the ground, whether, you know, we're getting goals, getting assists, or just constantly running in behind, making them have to chase us. So I think that was the biggest thing is why they stopped coming to press because we were getting in behind them and it just, it took that first goal. And then, you know, my goal, I think Diego, I think he won the ball, but again, it was a ball in behind them and we were able to capitalize on that. And as you saw in the second half, the game just opened up and we were just getting in behind them so much. So for me, I think, that's the biggest thing is that when teams come to press us, you know, we have to be able to be strong up front, hold the ball up and get in behind and, you know, and create the chances that way, not just playing like nice soccer. What a Jake Shapiro, Burgundy Wave. Hey, Johnny, maybe this is a question for uh, Diego and not you, but do you think there's any significance to Diego kind of plugging his ears after that goal? And if so, what, would, what did that mean? Was there a message from you guys as a group? Uh, I don't know if there's any significance, but all I can say is this, the guy had a fantastic game today and everybody just needs to believe in him. I believe in him. The coaching staff believes in him. You know, he's a top striker in this league and I've always said that. So, you know, he had a fantastic game today and you saw what he can do. You know, Atlanta United at the end of the day, they have very good defenders in the back and he had what a goal and assist today and he looked up for the challenge. So for me, you know, that that's the game that he can bring. And again, when we're on the week, we trust him to score goals. We trust him to create things and we're and he works hard so you know i think all our whole team works hard so i think it's just 
you know, we we believe in him, and he showed it today. We'll turn to Brian Jennings, also bearing the wave. Johnny, good stuff tonight. Thanks for stepping in with us here. Um, kind of flip the switch a little bit. You know, as a second half of one, I noticed you guys really defended well as a unit, everybody on the pitch. Can you kind of talk about how you guys approach that and, and really how you embrace that as the game went on with that lead? I just think like it's it's part of our DNA. Our DNA, you know. I think every team has an identity in this league. You know, you have the teams like us, Nashville. I don't even know who else, but like you know, who are very, very, very good defensive teams. You know, and then you have teams that play good attacking soccer, like the Atlanta Uniteds, like the Kansas Cities, and they score a lot of goals. And you know, so I. <laughs> I think for us, it's just embracing that ide identity. And, you know, Robin says it all the time, doing the things that make you uncomfortable, doing the dirty work that you don't really want to do. Because if you're willing to do it more than the, the player that you're playing against, you know, winning those individual battles, then, you know, you're going to come out on top. And I just think today, as you saw, you know, it was a scrappy game. But I think every, each and every single one of us for most of the game won our individual battles and we were ready to get our hands dirty. So I think embracing that mentality, you know, and then when it comes to being able to play pretty soccer, you know, we know we can hang with everybody. So just being able to get our elbows dirty and then being able to flip the switch and play pretty soccer at times, that's going to be the key for this season, you know, being able to do both and embracing the identity on the day that we have to bring. Go back to Matt. Johnny, last one from me. This isn't necessarily a question that's implying a criticism of the officials, but lots of yellow cards, lots of fouls. Miles Robinson with two yellows in this one. Do you felt the game was tightly called, and did you have a problem with that, or do you think it played into your advantage? No, honestly, I don't think the ref did a bad job today, actually. I thought he was decent. You know, I thought he let some things play. I think he made some poor calls, but I think for the most part, you know, like, he, I thought he officiated the game pretty decent. You know, at the end of the day, like, when, when we, you know, this is a long a long way from now, but when you get to playoff, you know, it's going to be physical like that. There was tackles that definitely flew today, 50-50s, people getting stuck in. So for me, we have to embrace that, but I like that. I prefer when refs let us play and people can get into each other, you know, because that's how football is supposed to be played. It's not supposed to be just every little thing you get a whistle, you know.